Hello, I'm Jean Matsura with the League of Women Voters of California. With me now is Laura Wells, the Green Party candidate for state controller. In 60 seconds, who is Laura Wells? Well, I'm a person who believes that Californians really want to have a state that works for us now and for us in the future, and that there's a recognition that we're we're in a crisis mode in certain ways, and that we there are things that we need to do now and we can do for our future generations, including I have an 18-year-old daughter, and we want things to work for not just her, but for the adults and children now and in the future. Why are you running for controller, and how are you qualified? Well, the controller is the person in the state that follows the money and reports to the boss. And what's important about that is I believe to understand really what's going on, you need to follow the money to see what's uh, happening with the state contracts and where the money's coming from and where the money is going to. How I'm qualified is that I have worked for, in, in the for-profit and non-profit world, I've worked in non-profits for 17 years as in financial systems, essentially computers and money as a programmer, systems analyst, and project manager, and in nonprofits in administration and fundraising, in, very, in the areas of investment, stocks, bonds, mortgages, real estate, loans, and, and fundraising. What do you see as the most important responsibility of the controller's office? The thing that I think is really important about the controller's office is that that's the person that watches what has happened with the money. And the controller audits does the audits and what I believe okay sometimes a controller in an organization can audit the budget I believe by the time it gets to the budget often it is already off when you consider what the intentions of the people are for example Californians want great universities we've had a heritage of having wonderful schools and yet in the past 15 years do you know how many prisons have been built 21 in the past 15 years. In the past 25 years, do you know how many universities? Two. Two, just barely two. And what Californians want are universities, not prisons. And so the, it's up to the controller to watch to see what the people have intended and where, what the results have been, what, where the money has gone. Mm -hmm. And if elected, what would be your top three priorities and how do you uh, think that you will accomplish these? Goals. Right. The top three priorities is to get to the bottom of why, that the, why there are prisons instead of universities. That's one. And part of that answer, I expect, will, I know, will be that you can funnel money through prisons easier than you can funnel money through schools for new contracts, for high-tech high prisons, for um, uh, prison services, and then with prison labor. And so you can you can funnel money to the corporations and the very wealthy individuals who benefit by the corporations who have financed the campaigns. And that's what our state government has done to a large degree. The people want universities. That's a very big item right there. Another item is Proposition 13. That was voted on. That's the proposition that froze property taxes. And it was voted by the uh, people of California in 1978. What has happened since then has not been what the people intended. The people intended to, well, the people were sick of taxes. I think all of us can understand that. And the area that people are able to vote on taxes is not the, for example, the military budget of the U.S. government, which has just increased. The increase in the military budget this past year the increase alone is larger than the military budget of any other country in the world, just the increase. And it's over $300 billion, the in to total um, amount of, the, of it. And, but people don't get to vote on that. They get to vote on things that are near and dear to their hearts, like schools, libraries, parks, the roads, potholes. And that's the circumstance where people voted for Prop 13 to reduce the taxes where they could vote on it. Also, people didn't want to have the situation where seniors who had been in their homes for many years lost their homes because of the ever-rising property taxes. 
Now, since then, what has happened is that a large share of the benefit has gone to commercial properties, so that residents in total are now paying more and commercial properties less, whereas it used to be the other way around. So the losers, the big losers, are our first-time home buyers who have a much harder time uh, swallowing that pill of the high property taxes. And the oh, biggest winners are the, gi the giant corporations. And that's something that the people need to know what the effect has been. It's even affected the wealthy suburbs and the, the wealthy cities because there's less open space and more congestion because of the reliance on, pro on sales tax. Now, the third thing, and I've sort of um, alluded to that already, is the enormous corporate greed and corporate crime that we're experiencing, both in this state with the campaign contributions that have been given with the full expectations of favors to be returned, and um, in, our, in our country. I think we've seen that. We need some people that, do, that control, that do the controller's work, the auditing work, the accounting work with integrity and with values of the people. Mm -hmm. um, and going back to the property taxes and local governments having been reliant on the property taxes, uh, in today's situation, how uh, do you see a way in which state governments can help local governments uh, be more stable in maintaining their services? Right. The, I believe strongly, and there's lots of evidence to support this, that the people in a locality, if they are given the opportunity to have control over their own finances and their own decisions, that they will make good decisions for that. What has happened uh, along with Prop, when Prop 13 came into effect is that the money went up to the state and then came back down. Mm -hmm. the, with the property tax, taxes being frozen and, until properties were, were sold, which brings us back to the corporations, which don't usually sell the properties. They'll lease them for 99 years, but not get sold, so it stays low. But with that shift, cities have been relying more and more on sales tax as a base, because they get to keep a portion of the sales tax generated within their jurisdiction. So what happens is that rather than build housing, where you need to have more services like schools and, and sewage systems and roads and public services, social services, city, neighborhood cities, neighboring cities are vying with each other for sales tax revenue. And so then there, a retail outlet comes and says, okay, well, what will you give us? And they'll say, well, this low property tax, we'll build a freeway exit, we'll do this, we'll do that. Say, so, okay, and they go to the other city, what will you give us? The open space is eaten up by new uh, construction for malls and big box stores. And, and the people lose. They lose open space. They get congestion. They lose housing. Housing becomes more, becomes more and more expensive because it doesn't generate revenue, whereas stores do. Now, if people, if the property tax um, stayed, and if we revised Prop 13 to be the benefit that the people voted for, which was for the people, the residents, not for the commercial properties, then more money would stay there and they would be able to make the decisions and to have control of their own finances. Mm -hmm. This year, the state of California has entered the budget process with an unprecedented $24 billion deficit. And how do you think that this budget deficit should be resolved, and how can we avoid such a deficit in the future? Well, the, the controllers, I'll ask, answer the last question first, and the controller, it, during the process of auditing what the people intend and where the money has actually gone, can feed that process into the legislators and the governor to say that these are the things the, like, the, like some of those 21 prisons that we've gotten in the last 15 years that the people do not want. And, uh, and can say that more of this and less of that. There is a lot of waste. There's a report. Uh, the website for it is uh, Green Scissors, www.greenscissors.org, that identifies a lot of, of things that have, where, where there's waste, um, including 
environmentally destructive construction projects and so on. So people can take a look at that. I would, I would support those. Um, another thing is that the vehicle license fees could be reinstituted with a change for the first $5,000 value of a car. Don't tax that, but tax beyond that so as not to hurt the low income, but that, the low income uh, drivers. That was taken away a few years ago, and, and who has that benefited? A big share of that, 25% of that, had been directed toward health services and social services, and now that's been gone. So, so reinstitute that to help balance the, bu the budget. Mm -hmm. um, there's a third item that I'll bring up later. It's out of my mind right at the moment. Uh, the California uh, Revision Commission has recommended that we have a two-year budget cycle. Are you in agreement with that and why? I think so. that would take more study. Actually, it's, it's good to be in the office and take a look at it. But it sounds like that would be good for longer-term thinking. And, and planning and to allow the legislators time to deal with the other important things that they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. We have less than four minutes left and uh, I'd like to ask you that there have been a recent court decisions saying that the controller cannot make payments to mm -hmm. vendors and to uh, state employees, etc. if the legislature has not passed a budget. Uh, what a if elected and uh, the fiscal year begins without a budget, uh, what will you do to ensure that the salaries and the school districts uh, salaries are paid and the school districts get their money, the vendors are paid? Uh, I, I would carry on the tradition that, that the current controller, Kathleen Connell, has been courageous enough to do, which is to try, use all, uh, everything in her power to to ensure that the teachers get paid and the state employees get paid and that the obligations of the state continue. Mm -hmm. And if that situation arises with no budget in place by the time of the new fiscal year, would you continue to sign checks for the governor and the legislators? If the law requires that, yes. And if the law requi doesn't require it, if the law requires that they not get, get them paid, then, then it seems as then I would do, follow that as well. Mm -hmm. The California Constitution Revision Commission recommended that the Office of Controller uh, be an appointed one rather than elected. Uh, do you agree or disagree and why? I, uh, no way. <laughs> I think that the people need an advocate to follow the money and report to the boss. It needs to be very clear that the public is the boss and they need to know what's going on with the money so that they can control, so that we can control our own finances and our own lives, mm -hmm. and that of our children. <laughs> the California Constitution Revision Commission also recommended merging the Franchise Tax Board with the Board of Equalization to make the collection of taxes more efficient and not to duplicate efforts. Do you feel that uh, uh, this reorganization of the collect tax collection structure in California is necessary or desirable? Well, thank you, Jean, and you just reminded me of the other major item that would help to balance the budget, and that is, again, to reinstitute, to sort of correct the things that were, that went, that were, the mistakes that were made over the past few years would help to balance the budget. One of them is to reinstitute the high income tax brackets. Right now, low income tax people, the lowest bracket, pays over 12% of their income in taxes. The highest 1%, very wealthy, very high income tax earners, less than 8%. California needs to make things more fair, not less fair, so that, so that anyone can make it, as, as, we're, as is one of our chief American values. We're coming to the end of the interview, but I'd like to uh, give you this opportunity to add anything else that you may wish for this interview. Well, thank you for all of your questions. And what I really believe that we need our values, the values of grassroots democracy, the values of ecological wisdom, of environmental wisdom, nonviolence, and social justice. And we can do those and make a better world for us and our kids. Thank you very much for coming here today for this interview. And good luck with your campaign. Well, thank you, Jean. Thank you.